Oh, yes. I forgot I was going to do a movie review. You're with Julian on the brand note, and uh, I have spoken at length about my um, certain uh, weird fandoms, uh, the Fast and the Furious movies and uh, Jason Statham movies, and Liam, Liam Neeson. And that's come up because he's released so many movies. He's been in 102 films. Um, and he was being in really interesting... Oh, he always leaves the air con. It's freezing in here at the moment. Um he was getting really interested sort of around 2015. He started appearing. Uh, Run All Night was a great Liam Neeson film. If you haven't seen it, get in there. Um, Silence, the Martin Scorsese film. Misfire, still really interesting. And actually, by far the best third of that film was the final third with Liam Neeson. And he was excellent. A great role for him. The commuter was a, was superiorly Neeson. He was in the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, um, Coen Brothers film, Widows, that brilliant film. Cold Pursuit was one of the best ever Liam Neeson actioners. Very unusual, hyper black comedy, a stunning film. He's got different genres. He does cold films. So he's done The Grey. The Grey was absolutely superb, the one about the wolf. Uh, and he's done Cold Pursuit, and now he's done The Ice Road, which I'm reviewing now. And um, this year alone, I've reviewed three Liam Neeson movies, all substandard. Honest Thief uh, was an amiable attempt. It was a really stock standard film, and it wasn't great. I think I gave, would have probably given it a 6 out of 10. The Marksman, I thought, was underrated. It wasn't great again, but it was actually quite... Uh, well made and acted Liam Neeson was really good in his role as he um, picks up uh, a, a child on the border of his property which borders Mexico and the mum's shot by the cartels and he races across America to take the young kid to his family um, and the acting was really good in it um, and I thought it was a superior effort just because the quality of uh, everything even though it's really slight the quality was really good and um, he's come back with The Ice Road, <laughs> uh, the third one I've reviewed this year. So um, this time it's Jonathan Hensley, and uh, it's basically a, re a remake of The Wages of Fear, uh, which itself was remade as the film that I reviewed by William Freaking Sor Sorcerer. I reviewed that last year and gave it a 9.5 out of 10. It's actually, I think, slightly better than... I think George Clouseau's original 1950s Wages of Fear, one of the greatest suspense films of all time. Basically, people, desperados, taking dangerous cargo through dangerous landscapes in trucks to go to a mine site. And that's essentially what this film is. Uh, Liam Neeson um, <coughs> is uh, a trucker who has a dis mentally disabled brother who was uh, injured in uh, the Gulf War and now has um, some form of uh, mental incapacitation where he can, he can, he's a brilliant mechanic, he can't talk properly anymore, and so on. And they keep losing jobs and moving around. But very early on, uh, like I think the opening scene, it's very apparent that Liam Neeson blames all of his troubles on his disabled brother when all of it is him. Um, he's a violent hothead, and it's, he's, he's the reason that they keep losing their jobs. And the other guy is Lawrence Fishburne, who owns the trucking company. And these um, guys are in a mine site right in an amazing wilderness in Canada, right near the Arctic Circle. And um, there's a methane gas explosion after they've been told. You can see them turning off the methane gas monitors because they've been told that there's no possibility of it in order not to slow down production. And it does go off, trapping the miners, acing the whole style. There's a race to get to them. 30 odd miners before the oxygen runs out so they go to get these things that can go through the earth from dakota or somewhere in north dakota but the only way they can transport them is via trucks and the one caveat of this film which is, is this is one of those like old school films where they'd pitch an idea to a hollywood studio in a sentence and that would be why the, the film would get made and in this instance it's the ice road that they're going to use to get to the mine is closed from April because it starts warming up and temperatures uh, make the ice thinner and carrying heavy trucks on this ice platform all the way up to the Arctic Circle is incredibly dangerous because the trucks will go through the ice into the water and be lost. 
so they need desperados to do this job and the incredibly named amber mid thunder um what was she in i did i recognize her but i haven't seen anything else that she's been in so they get this band of drivers one of them's lawrence fishburne uh, one of them's amber mid thunder who is perfectly fine in this film but it destabilizes things quite a lot that they have this young woman in this role when you think like everyone else is like this old man war horse it just doesn't quite fit uh, I suppose in the post Fast and Furious world it fits, but it, it was a little bit jarring to me. And they head off with these three trucks going north along this dangerous ice road. Now, Lawrence Fishburne keeps doing this. Maybe I thought maybe uh, Liam Neeson's family are forcing him to work in every terrible film that comes his way because he's he went through this period of making the best ones that he's ever made. And now he's just gone back to making the most stock taken two stock level films that he's made. But Lawrence Fishburne keeps showing up in movies, being the biggest star or at least one of the only major stars in the film, and dying right at the start. I'm sure I've seen like three films where he's I've been like, oh, he's the biggest one in it. Oh, he's dead. And it just keeps happening. And he dies really quickly. But one of the big problems with this film is that narratively it asks it, it makes stupid decisions and you're like what like not only having a young woman as one of the drivers okay i can live with that they make a big play about how they need three trucks that are identical with identical equipment on in so in case they lose one through the ice or both of them through the ice they can still get one to the end so what do they do when lawrence fishburne's truck starts sliding into the ice tether all three trucks together as if that isn't the stupidest idea in history. I know we have to have three trucks in case we lose one. Let's tie them all together. And that was one of the dumbest scenes I've ever seen. Um, we find out there's shenanigans with um, one of the mining guys that they've asked to sit in the trucks with them to make sure they get there. And the fact that the mine is um, operating corruptly and uh, you know they don't really want them to commit their mission, so they make it their mission in life to stop them. Um, this is um, it's a film that fluctuates between the, the, the uncomfortable thing is, is it it touches on being a zero budget film with how bad some of it is. Some of the special effects are really bad. <clears throat> And if it's got this whole idea of the ice road, it throws up another paradigm, which is the wave. So in Clouseau's Wages of Fear, the mo perhaps the most iconic bit is where they have to drive along this corrugated road with trucks full of dynamite. And that was the basis of the movie Speed. So they couldn't slow down because vibrations would get too high. They had to maintain this speed so they could skip over it a bit and they couldn't go too fast. Otherwise, it would blow up this very unstable dynamite. Here, they can't go too slow because they'll sink into the ice. And if they go too fast, they create a wave. So we get this thing that no one else has ever seen before. I don't think. I'd never heard of it. Which is that this, this undulating wave goes ahead of the trucks and, and creates this huge, you know, the burst through. Uh, which is pretty cool, but the effects are so bad. I like the idea of it. Um, like everything it was so derivative I mean everything was really derivative of other films um, nothing really <laughs> isn't um, I like the widescreen tundra that was beautiful the widescreen tundra was really good Liam Neeson is uh, um, he was reliable but there's just no writing to any of the characters everything here is stock um, the one thing that it did have going for it is some of the suspense sequences and action sequences were actually really good and i quite like those and the tension of the ice always about to give way was was pretty good as well um it felt like it was a bit half finished there was there were some moments in it where you could see the brother starting to breach the subject of the fact that it was liam neeson's fault that they kept getting dragged down not him um but they never finished it they just left it and he's like well surely that was at one point they had that as a big emotional confrontation between these two brothers um so it's all very half-assed really um it's the worst of the three that's come out this year which is saying something as not any of them were good um and um no one's really terrible in it and it's got it's got good action but it does make you think that it's it's veering off into zero budget territory with 
some of the silliness and some of the poor effects as well. So it's a pretty poor film. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 for The Ice Road. And I would watch it because I'm a Liam Neeson saddo. But anyone else is probably going to watch it who isn't a Liam Neeson saddo and be disappointed they ever bothered. So 4 out of 10 for The Ice Road. Sadly, the worst of the Neeson bunch this year. Uh, this is the first song off of Paddy Smith's debut album, Horses. One of the most influential.